Welcome to Electron Line and continuing in our search for the explanation of the Big Bang of the Universe. Now let's move ahead in time a little bit till the early 1960s where we meet up with Robert Dickey and P.J. Peebles. What did they do? Well, they went off the theories, the earlier theories, that there must have been a very hot universe. And then they also, of course, went along with the theory that based on Hubble constant and Hubble's law, that the universe has been expanding, and it wasn't that the, un that the universe, were, where the galaxies were flying away from each other, it was simply that the space between galaxies was expanding, and the galaxies just went along for the ride. Not that the galaxies cannot move through space, and because of gravitational interaction, they do move relative to each other, but the general expansion of the universe was due to the expansion of space itself. And so they came up with an interesting idea. They said, well, whatever radiation is in space, as it's flying through space, and over the billions and billions of years as space expands, radiation must be stretched along with space. If you have a wave, an electromagnetic wave that moves through space, and space is expanding, then the wave must be expanding. So they said that if there's any radiation out there today, then in the past it must have been very short wavelength, and today it must have, it must have grown to a very long wavelength. So they also understood uh, about Wien's law. Wien had discovered that there's a relationship between the temperature of an object and the kind of radiation that, becomes a, that is emitted from that. So we have the concept of the black body radiation. And so an object that is at a certain temperature will put out radiation at a certain wavelength or vice versa. If you want to know the temperature of an object, we can then simply find out what the radiation that is emitted by the object is, divide that into 0.0029, which is a constant that was discovered, and out pops the temperature of the object. So they began to think, well, if the early universe was really, really hot again because of the idea that a large portion, 25% of all the hydrogen at the beginning of the universe must have been converted into helium, and therefore the universe must have been very hot. And if the universe was very hot, there must have been very high energy radiation at very short wavelengths. And since we now realize that the universe is expanding, that radiation that must have existed in the very early stages of the universe, when the universe was really hot, must have been expanded to a much longer wavelength today, representing much cooler temperatures today. Again, if you look at Wien's law, if the wavelength gets bigger, that is because the temperature gets smaller. A smaller t in the denominator will give you a bigger wavelength, according to Wien's law. So they wanted to figure out if that radiation is still out there. And so they began to make plans for building a telescope to try and detect that radiation. They wanted to find out if there was radiation left in the universe that was there at the very beginning, but that must have since been expanded to something very large today. In other words, the universe would have cooled down to a much cooler temperature compared to what the temperature was of the universe billions and billions of years ago, all the way to the very beginning, where it must have been many, many millions of degrees in temperature for this nuclear a fusion process to take place within the universe, converting a quarter of all the hydrogen into helium. So they began to design this telescope to try and detect that. But they were actually beaten by another team of engineers who accidentally stumbled upon the very same concept and for their effort received the Nobel Prize. If you're interested in that, stay tuned to the next video and we'll talk about how that was discovered.